Don't move. Who are you? What's going on? Whoa. Easy with that thing. I'm a doctor. You're very sick. I said don't move. Where am I? You're okay. You have a virus. You were put into stasis to slow it down. What are you talking about? How'd I get a virus? We're not really sure how it transmits yet. Maybe through blood. Blood? <laughs> Rewind to 2005. Near the end of the original Xbox's life cycle, a first-person shooter called Pariah was released and roundly dismissed by critics. Yet again, despite the drumming it took in the press, I actually enjoyed it back then. Having played through it a second time only just recently, it's safe to say the game hasn't aged gracefully. In the wake of so many other great shooters, and even in its heyday, it had to compete with far superior titles like Halo and Far Cry, but there's still quite a bit to like. To begin with, screw the reviews. Even by today's standards, there's some fun to be had here. In fact, Pariah had some pretty cool features just begging to be ripped off in a brand new game the way Gears of War ripped from Kill Switch. For instance, your character's medical background allows him to heal himself in a pretty innovative style. The tool he uses to replenish lost health is located in his inventory much like a weapon. It even requires ammo to be of any further use once it wears down. When selected, a quick pull of the right trigger initiates the healing process. A cool riff on Halo and its regenerating shields without feeling like a total steal. Second, and perhaps more importantly, at the time the game was basically the only one in town that allowed you to upgrade your weapons. Granted, now we have Army of Two and such, and it makes Pariah's customization options pale in comparison, but at the time, what Pariah did was pretty damn fresh and very damn cool. It even provided some strategic concerns due to your limited upgrading possibilities. Do you amp up your shotgun for higher damage at close range, or upgrade your more well-rounded assault rifle instead? Hmm, questions. The story behind Pariah begins with promise aplenty. A mysterious ship transporting a cryogenically frozen woman crash lands on Earth, now a refuge for criminals and mercenaries. Shot down by unknown attackers, you as Dr. Jack Mason and said token Fem survive, but as luck would have it, she's infected with some kind of super virus that could cause all kinds of havoc in the wrong hands. And as far for the chorus with these things, the wrong hands are trying to grope this broad and harness the power she possesses. It's seemingly up to Jack to forgo the little Hippocratic Oath thing and thwart these evil ambitions. The story gets muddled in short order and certainly wouldn't be one of its most memorable traits were not for a twist ending that really did blow my mind. Despite many clues, I never saw it coming and it made the aforementioned plot one of gaming's most memorable to this particular player and trust me, I've played my share. The primary reason the game isn't going to go down in history, apart from scathing and somewhat unfair reviews, is lackluster level design and vague mission objectives. The original Halo was an obvious source of inspiration here, right down to the aforementioned vague mission objectives and lackluster level design. But Halo enjoyed a smooth frame rate at all times, very few technical hiccups, and more satisfying gunplay. For a shooter, needless to say, gunplay is key. Unfortunately, Pariah suffered from the engine it was built on, that creaky and now thankfully retired Unreal 2 affair. Sure, it looked good, but it never translated to console titles worth half a shite. A co-op mode might have gone a long way in both the Xbox release of Unreal 2 and Pariah. We're playing split-screen not so goddamn choppy on both titles, that is. Pariah must have known it wasn't a feature to tout. A split-screen co-op mode was damn near an Easter egg. One that should stay hidden, I might add. Sure, it's good at first, but when more enemies and bigger levels come into view, it turns into a virtually unplayable slideshow. Just like Unreal 2 on the console. I love co-op modes, but neither could hack it. In single player, frame rate isn't terrible, but it drops regularly enough to be annoying. Glitches add the feeling that Pariah wasn't ready to ship when it initially did. Still, this was and remains a pretty decent game that's definitely worth playing if you're not dead set on co-oping it with a pal, which I would strongly advise against. As it's now officially backward compatible on the 360, I would advise shootists who missed it to give it another chance and stick with it well beyond its slow start. That ending is definitely one to catch. So in short, Pariah hasn't aged like a fine wine because it never was a fine wine to begin with. But it's a nice cool beer that hasn't gone flat just yet. How do you like that analogy? That's pretty cool, huh? Or not. But, you know, you get the idea. <laughs>